doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting uh, here with Kia. Why are you mad? <laughs> All right, rocking and rolling. Valid is back in the building. How you doing today, bro? What up, though, man? Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year's, man. I forgot today's New Year's Day, right? Yes, sir, it is. Yeah, we just kept it going, kept it working. Kept it going. Man. We didn't stop, man. We don't Hell stop yeah. for nothing. We don't. There's no holidays when you're working in the entertainment industry. You just got to keep pressing, man. Talk about what's been going on with you, man, since the last time you've been on here with some new updates for us. Shit. Um, since I've been on here, what was that? Uh, October, November-ish. Um, I just dropped a single fever with the record company out uh, back in my motherland in Serbia. Shout out to Valtonativa Records. They put out a single called Fever. And, um, well, shit, and this Friday, I got a single coming out, me, Fat Ray, and Big Herc. Cool. It's called Prayer to the Players. Music video coming out. Shout out mm. to my dog, Mino. So uh, it's about to get real real grimy out here, bro. We got that single, the one that's coming out this week and shit like that. We got a mixtape dropping. It's called the Bronco Tape. This, this is the special announcement. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Kid L interview podcast <laughs> exclusive, baby. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, the Bronco Tape. Um, so you're about to see a lot of visuals. Uh, a lot of dope music. Me and Asaka the Renegade got a joint. Um, it's, it's about to get... Asaka's legendary, to, man. Um, yeah. We're about to have a good time. You already know it's going to be a real tape. You know, you got you on it, and then you got, you know, Asaka's just a real... That's just the guy who's really stomping the grounds right now. Oh, like, that's my guy, I can't man. wait for him to be, like, main... Her, yeah. Like, her, like a, we spoke, a wider we spoke, audience. It was, it was dope, man. We spoke <laughs> well of him the last time I was here. Oh, and yeah. then I saw the conversation when... Uh, he was here, and I guess uh, Stretch Money's name and my name got brought up, and I saw you guys, you know, so had some cool, cool things to say. So I appreciate that. You know, it's it's definitely mutual. So for sure, uh, shout out to my guy Nick Speed. He produced the record with me and Asaka the Renegade. So very, very cool, man. Um, now last time you were on here, <clears throat> you know, I was actually surprised we released your clips. I didn't really, I didn't know if it was gonna gain traction or what was gonna happen, but. I didn't think there was going to be any traction. I honestly, man, I, just, just to be around. just to be real, I'm not gonna not to sugarcoat anything. Usually, yeah. if it's not a person that's <clears throat> of a certain color, sometimes the traction is like they, they skip over it. Unless a person says something extremely stupid, then it's like, <laughs> all right, let's skip over it. But you made a statement that you know it had some validity to it. You said you know out of valid outside <laughs> facts outside of Detroit. Detroit hip hop is perceived differently in other countries. And yeah, man, it was so funny to me. And and ever since I did that interview, I look at like celebrities who do interviews with with major like I have more respect for them cuz every word you say <laughs> like if you slip up one syllable or you say <laughs> something that's kind is just like and especially in this era, it's not like our parents' era or shit where you buy a magazine at the store and you read an article and you just say it to yourself, like, ah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And you throw the magazine out. Everybody's got a voice. Anybody can leave a YouTube comment on Instagram. And it's like, golly, man, y'all take everything. Like, like, I said what I said, and I'm just chilling on a fucking couch with you, dog, yeah. talking, right? Do I mean what I said? Yeah. Do I mean it? To the degree that I know when I speak that, like, I'm God and it can't be challenged. No, man, I get it. <laughs> there's there's multiple sounds of Detroit hip hop and it's heard all over the world. And it's like, do I really have to get that specific and, like, defend my comments, what I said on this couch? Do we have to take it there? It's like, dog, when I said that the boom bap neo soul is how Detroit hip hop is identified outside of the country— Yes. I, do I believe that's true? Yes. Do I also know that 42 Doug and these other guys are also getting spins out the country? Yes. Does that contradict my first statement? No. Right. Both of these can be true at the same time. You get what I'm saying? And I had to like, I caught myself in the comments, like replying to people. And I'm like, why the fuck am I wasting my time, dog? <laughs> y'all talking about me. I don't need to talk about y'all. Yeah. So it was just like, but I had to tell people like, look, man. Books are being written about Dilla and that style of hip hop. College courses around the world are being uh, 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 taught about these guys. And 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 with that being said, you know, the history books show from all over the world that in that era, Detroit hip hop started making its own sound. And it was very soulful. It was Slum Village. It was all that. And that's all I was saying, bro. Yeah. I'm not taking away from nobody. And it's so funny how people, they grasp towards the controversy. Because the words I said before that, because I watched the clip a million times to make sure I didn't say no fucked up shit, 
I said I love both sides. I love both sides of it. Yeah. I love the 42 Dugs and the T Grizzlies and the Vezos, and that's Detroit hip hop. I said those words. Right. But cats didn't hear that. They just heard me say, yo, outside of the country, though, they love Dilla and Slum Village. <laughs> oh, this old head hating, dog. Yeah. Did y'all not watch the whole clip? I didn't even know you can do that on but Instagram. You're just speaking facts. It's just like what the what they're gathering from the outside is not what we're gathering from the inside. Once you're inside the city, you're hearing these sounds and people are appreciating yeah. it. But in other countries, the sounds that you're talking about are what's being appreciated. Yeah, and there's more nothing so. wrong with that. It's yeah. all beautiful. And, and, and for everybody who found trouble with what I said last time. I love it all, man. I love yeah. all this shit. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's just like and a, I love you too. Relax, <laughs> baby. Hit me up. DM me. What's up? We can talk. Let's go get a beer. What's been um you are you still working with Stretch Money, right? Um That's my guy. You guys did uh Aretha the Aretha Franklin Park. That was yeah, this past summer. That was uh yeah. me and Stretch, Exhibit, Dog Pound, uh Eight Ball and MJG and Big Herc and Jay Nutty. That was one of the coolest fucking days ever dog. what was the response like from the audience man it was dope so big herc <laughs> went on he got the crowd super hype me and stretch went on and and it was funny because this was like right in the like the middle of the bill and isaiah run like the album was only out for like a couple months and we were still dropping visuals and shit like that and we were still selling a lot of the the, the valid stretch money t-shirts and shit so i was like okay maybe some of these people are gonna know when i saw actually how many people were aware of the project and and and, and I'm, i'll never forget i'm seeing this dude all the way to the left uh uh bigger heavier set dude defitted tiger's jersey he knows every fucking word so this dude must have been listening to this bill and isaiah project religiously because he knows my lyrics right now better than i do like i'm like you know what I'm, saying? I'm like that it was one of the coolest moments of my life and then like flavor flavor was there and he says what's up to us and it was just like it was fucking wild you know what i'm saying and, and hex murder comes backstage he's clowning me for the way i was dressed and uh that was funny <laughs> as fuck shout out to hex murder what'd you have on i had like these blue slacks like i really wanted to go for the miami vice look because aretha's right off the water we're bill and isaiah you know what i'm saying i really wanted to go for the hall of fame Look, you know what I'm saying? So I had this button up. I had these like shiny blue s slacks on. <laughs> I had red loafers with no socks on. And it was just super dapper. Yeah. He saw me. So we're, <laughs> are we at church? <laughs> yeah, <got laughs> My you. man's hex murder. <laughs> he clowning me all day. But it, it was a dope moment, man, because Exhibit was, you know, chilling with us uh, in our locker room. So like our, not locker room, our dressing room. I'm sorry. No, no, it's Bill and Isaiah locker room. It makes sense. Yeah, it does make it's sense. fitting. So our locker room became the hangout, man. Exhibit was in there, and it was just seeing Hex X and uh, uh, my DJ. DJ had our DJ. He's known Exhibit for years. They used to tour on the Anger Management and all those European, like, D12, Obi oh. Trice, Eminem tours with Exhibit. So Head and, 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 and Exhibit are really close. So it was like a family reunion, and it, it, it was a dope moment, man. Shout out to Obi Trice. You know, me and uh, uh, Obi were there talking for a while. It was a cool conversation. So, What kind of conversation did you have with Obi, man? Um, I remember it actually vividly because I was a huge Obi fan. Still am a huge Obi fan. So it's not past tense. It's present tense. And he came up to me. And, man, we were just talking. I was in one of his videos many years ago. So we know each other, but we don't know each other like that. And he just had some real cool shit to say about the Bill and Isaiah album. Really? And it was funny because uh, I told him, you know, and he asked me, he's like, how's Super MC doing? How's it? And I'm like, man, Super's doing good. He's doing his album and shit like that. And uh, and we were just talking, like, Proof's name got brought up in the conversation. I said, well, you know, that's actually kind of low-key how I met Soup is because is Proof's mom shouted me out and da-da-da. And then I was like, and then Dilla's mom helped me and boo-boo. And Obi was like, yeah. And he goes, but let me tell you something, dog. Obi was just like, you're dope. You're dope. That's why you're here, because you're dope. You yeah. know? And I was like, well, thank you. And he kept saying, like, how dope the Bill and Isaiah project was. And, I, and then he was just like, I, I made him laugh. I was like, dog, we're in a room full of a bunch of gangster rappers, dog pounds over there, exhibits over here, motherfucking. I go, if you keep saying this shit, you're going to make me cry, bro. I'm going <laughs> to look like the biggest pussy in front of all my heroes. Right. So, you know, it, it was just a good time. We were chilling, yeah, man. man. And we, we've been listening to these cats, even exhibit. Man. These guys have been around forever, bro. It's like to hear anything from me. It was like when I had Bizarre from D12 on here, the funniest thing was I was interviewing him for an hour and a half before I, I remembered, like, how big of a fan I was of his. 
Yeah. I was like, it all. I was like, bro, wait a minute. What the fuck? In 2002, 2003, I was listening to your fucking ass. Religiously. Every like every fucking day. And now I'm sitting right next to you. What and, the fuck? And, and Obi, Obi still got it, man. When I, when I hear some new Obi shit, it's just like, damn, this motherfucker can rap. Yeah. Really, really good. And you know, I, I, that's what I'm interested in. Sometimes I get it. We can, we can say, you know, this guy can rap better than this guy, whatever, whatever, but his music is good. All I'm saying is that motherfucker Obi Trice raps yeah. at a very high level, and not just at a very high level, his flow, cadence, voice, unique. He's a one of one. Nobody can rap like him. Nobody rapped like him before him. Nobody was rapped like him since. He's a one on one. Obi Trice, real name, no gimmicks, baby. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, his name still resonates, right? And people kind of lose, like his name kind of gets lost when you talk to Detroit about like mm -hmm. the upcomings and whatever. But it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like Jay Dilly. You don't really hear about him anymore either, for real. You know, you know, we're, we're, it's a new generation, and, yeah. and, and it's almost like we're back on the same conversation we had it last is. time. It's, it's just a new generation, and that's okay, man. It's, it's, it, that's okay. It's dope to graduate to that Hall of Fame level where it's like, yo, if you were real head, you know about what was popping yeah. 15, 20 years ago. It's okay. With Obi, I will say this, last little cool, in my opinion, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Dr. Dre, right, his dopest production, his dopest beat, production, produced song, whatever you want to call it, ended up on Obi's album, Cheers. It's the song O featuring Busta Rhymes. That beat, is so fucking hard to me. And in my opinion, Obi Trice got Dre's dopest beat ever. That's wow. my opinion. When when did that release? That was Obi's uh, debut album, Cheers. So I don't know, what was that? 02, 03? Wow. So you're talking about forget it, the Eminem albums, forget NWA. <laughs> Google it. You know what I'm saying? Forget Obi the Obi Trice featuring Busta Rhymes. Oh. Produced by it's Dr. A lot Dre. Of tapes, man. Slim Shady, uh, Chronic, uh, the all hardest Drake beat. Slim. There's another Drake beat I like a lot too. It was a Nate Dogg solo song. Um, I don't want to fuck up the name of the title. I remember the lyrics, but I can't remember I the name you, of the man. song. I, listen, man, I have to believe you. You listen to way more hip hop and rap than me, like probably by <laughs> a billion percent. So. But it's so funny, man. You jump in my car. I think we might have talked about this last time too. Mm. I don't know what, maybe 30% of the time I'm listening to rap nowadays. Yeah, throwing out some here. old school shit, bro. I'm, the, I'm I'm retiring for sure pretty soon from listening to hip hop and rap just because this, like, I already listened to the shit I'm in love with so many times that now any anything else doesn't really like, what am I going to do? Keep listening to the shit I already listened to a thousand times? Mm -hmm. Eminem, fucking D12, like, whatever the hell. Like, I'm not going to keep rerunning that till the end of my life, bro. There's, <laughs> it comes to times where it ends, and now the new rap that's coming out. I was just telling somebody I just can't resonate with it. Not that there's something wrong with this new generation of rap, but it just ain't hitting for it's you. It's not hitting, bro. And whatever okay. it is, yeah, it's, it's it's perfectly you fine. Get in my car, you probably gonna hear some Anita Baker, right? <laughs> like real shit, yeah. dog. You're gonna hear uh, a lot of newer music. I, I do like like a lot of the R and B and shit that's coming out. Yeah. Um, I just yeah, can't. Man. You know, I don't know what it is. It's something about. The, when you're when you're deep like I feel like I'm deep enough into seeing a lot of things a lot of people don't get to, don't get to see and like having relationships with certain people that most people don't get to have relationships with and then once you understand what hip hop and rap is to some degree it makes it lose its mystique and when it loses its mm. mystique to a certain degree you're almost like man this is all fucking bullshit like what, what was the conversation what was the main one of the major conversation pieces me and you had last time what was that how I was talking about how a lot of this shit is fake yeah the numbers is fake. The post is fake. Fake, yeah. The 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 and I and I have a deeper theory on that where it's like, oh man, I don't even know if I want to open up this Pandora's box, but um, yeah. Anyone can rap, mm -hmm. okay? That doesn't mean you're good at it. You you come in, you say "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," you just rapped, bro. So anyone can rap. Not anyone can play a saxophone. Now, with that being said. Not anyone can be an extremely dope rapper. Hmm. Not everybody's Andre 3000. Not everybody's Elzai. Not everybody is 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 whatever. So, it's like the 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 cheeseburger and pizza of music. It's on every corner. You can get it anywhere. You don't need to be necessarily born musically inclined and talented to be a rapper. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So because of that, because people say well, anybody could do it, they do. And they get money behind them, and they buy the posts, they buy the videos, they buy the this, they buy the that. 
you can buy a hit song, bro. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, Fuck that time. We talked about that last time. But, but it's a you truth. can't you can't truly and and I remember when I was speaking with these like labels and these people who do uh music marketing and shit like that. Some people they say like these tactics that work in hip hop and rap as far as marketing and promotions and getting on blogs and this, that, and the third don't work in other genres of music. In in other genres, a lot of them Yes, there's still a pay-to-play payola scheme, but it, it doesn't work flawlessly like in the rap because, oh, shit, if you're marketing a jazz album or a a, a, a whatever album, uh, you really got to be able to play that instrument to a high level. It's just because of the popularity thing, right? Because yeah. Because now if you're extremely popular as a rapper, then people might listen to your music just because of how successful you are, how popular you're perceived to be. But they're not actually listening to for what, the music. What's happening. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't. Can you think of somebody that you ever became a fan of that, in retrospect, you were like, "I was just a fan of him because he was hot at that time." Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I can. You know who? Because some, I'm somebody that was kind of like that was Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy sure. was one of those cats that when he came out, everybody was fucking listening to him, but nobody ever told me nowadays that they're listening to Soldier Boy or even close to it. But they're still listening to the cats they used to listen to in the same era of time. I have a feeling Soldier Boy's gonna see this dog. I hope he does, man. He knows he's come on, bro. The guy <laughs> knows. <laughs> the guy knows what he did. He was just he 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 made, he utilized the the internet. He made something that was catchy, and then he fucking went off with it. But that doesn't mean that we're actually really fans of the motherfucker when he came out. For you real. know what we were fans of? We were fans of that catchy tune. Mm-hmm. And this is where they you hear people in the field of of music and art saying don't chase the catchy tune hit record make people a fan of you and they're interested in what you got to say and what you got to create not they're only interested in this one piece of artwork you made because it's so catchy because when that song is played out now and everybody's heard it 18 million times are they still checking for you again so this is where it's like okay and that's why Nas, here we are. You know what I'm saying, and 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 it's like. But it's scary to talk about those cats because there's like a popularity understanding of hip hop, like who's hot and trending and what's going on. But then there is the the hip hop heads, the guys who understand what's going on behind the music, that will still be fans of Nas till this day. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how many new fans he's grabbing. I don't know if he's. Grabbing- I think with, with Hit Boy, and we talked with me and you ended up on Hit Boy's IG story. I don't know if you noticed that. No. Nah. Because I, I chopped up the footage when uh, last time I was here and I, I mentioned Nas and Hit Boy. Mm. And, and Hit Boy posted it on his story, bro. And uh, it was pretty cool. But I think, you know, we talked about this last time. I think Nas knows how to stay relevant. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And 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 the shit he's doing with Hit Boy is, is good music. And at the end of the day, man, if you're making good music, You'll make new fans, the ones who care about yeah. music. That's what uh, the, you know. I don't know if you're familiar with Dogface Calderon. He's kind of like mm-hmm. reemerged in, mm-hmm. in, in podcasting. I, I, and... I did a couple years ago when I did my Mihailo album in 2019. I was on his show. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, he talked about working with Helva and producing a collaboration between the younger generation and the older generation and hip hop in Detroit, and just mixing it together and seeing what the fuck happens. You know, and you do wonder what the outcome is going to be because. The old generation is demanding a new Doughboys tape or, you know, rock bottom to just do a couple more tracks or whatever the hell the situation might be. And maybe intertwining it with these newer cats is possibly the solution for both eras. But the new cats have, like, nothing to gain from it for real, kind of. The new cats might be like, ah, like, they're not going to grab the old head's attention, I don't think. What about this? Not everybody thinks like me. I say you do things not for always the result. Mm. It's not about the result. That's fire. The art's gonna be dope, but you, you, the result is the art that you're gonna make. Don't worry about the fans and how many more fans and numbers we're gonna get. The music you're gonna make is gonna be dope. Boom! That's the yeah. reward. The song is dope. Yeah. That's the reward. End of conversation. It's kind of like. You know how everybody gets so worked up about how many likes or comments they got on a post? Mm-hmm. I remember even I got caught up in that at one point. I was like, man, I got to make sure this gets like 100 comments, like 1,000 likes, like, or else I got to take it down. Like that type of lame shit. And then one time I, I posted something that I just fucking loved that I made it. And it got like 100 likes. And I was like, I'm keeping it up forever. I don't give a fuck. Go, I love that shit. You know what's up, L? So that's what like a lot of people got to start 
it's it sucks because your portfolio your instagram is like your portfolio now so mm. when come, people come to peep your page new people come to peep, peep your page how many how much engagement is he getting well how many likes is he getting and you're so worried about that we're that, about to have the same conversation we had last we have time same, yeah, yeah like we things. had it we were talking about what if youtube didn't show the numbers that is what a, if what if spotify didn't show numbers bro that, that that's such a psychological game and um this is kind of like a sequel to our last conversation but you know what that was the most powerful point you made in the last talk we had. That if YouTube didn't show the views, then people would be the watching. The kids wouldn't more. know which video to watch. Yeah, they'd be like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna watch." I like this. Whatever guy's- I like. Yeah, whatever I um, like. Yeah, man, and it's nothing new. That's why record labels back in the '60s and '70s, they try to sell albums by telling you how many albums it was already sold. Really? You know what I'm saying? Hundred thousand copies sold, or a million copies sold. Platinum selling artist, new album. Oh well, if he sold that many albums, I want to buy one too. McDonald's always says one million burgers sold today, or whatever they're fucking, you know. One billion, I think. Yeah, one billion burgers <laughs> sold today. Oh, I gotta have one too. <laughs> it's this it human psychology, bro. They know the tricks, the ins and outs of your brain. So wait a minute. Do you think that they were telling the truth when they used to tell us? No. Do you think they were lying about how many albums were sold? No, back I don't in think day? nobody's telling the truth. I can go to McDonald's right now. The guy behind the fucking counter is lying to me. No, <laughs> about something. No, I'm not paranoid like that. I'm just joking. Yeah. But no, man, when you when you when you start throwing money in and you start throwing big money in and corporate money, man, ain't nobody being honest, bro. Yeah, popularity sells, right? Everybody's yeah. look, man. Behind- it's all at the end. With the way they'll justify it is, even the advertisement is just entertainment. It's all pro wrestling. It's yeah. all. It's all a work. It's all entertainment. We don't have to be honest about how many albums we sold. No. Just say it, bro. It's a part of the allure. It's a part of the entertainment. It's a part of the character we built, the this. And and these days, because of the, the feature sales are so easy. Like, you know, before, like, think about this concept, right? Back in the 2000s, selling a feature wasn't a thing that you could easily just publicize. Like, Yo, I'm selling features. I'm 50 Cent or like I'm whatever the hell. I'm I'm selling features. 50 Cent right? was selling this hat two weeks ago on uh, or three weeks ago on his uh, Instagram page, and I gripped it. You bought one? Ten bucks, brother. Ten bucks. Is that it right there? Free delivery. G Unit hat, baby. Oh, I loved yeah, it. Right. I was like, oh, this is like nostalgic. Reminded me of my childhood. G Unit hat for ten right from 50 Cent IG, baby. Hey, yo, yeah. fifth dog. You feel Come me? on, man. But the thing is, back in the day, you couldn't just publicize that you're selling features. It wouldn't. It's not a good look, first of all, back in the day to be like, I'm sure they just had managers communicate with other managers like, yo, dog wants to do a feature with dog. How much is it going to be? Ice Cube wants to do a feature with dog or this guy wants to do a feature with Ice Cube. That's how much it can be, right? Now you can literally tell people on the internet how much you're selling features for. You can literally post it in your story, post it on your Instagram page. And my whole, the reason I'm even bringing this up is not even to talk about feature people selling features it's about when they do promote that they maybe had talked to a major artist that maybe you collaborated with a major artist or maybe that your tape is doing so well these might be this might be all fake information but it's going to generate you feature sales because if you if you're tricking the artists that are in the industry that you're booming or blowing up then you're going to be able to sell a feature price price at a higher rate every time somebody does a, a rapper does a feature with another major rapper from detroit all of a sudden, the rapper from Detroit raises his p- feature prices and he promotes that he's charging for features. I just work with Kodak Black. Now I'm charging 20000 for features. And the idiots go like, oh, shit, he just did do one. He, he's going to blow up. I got to get a feature with him before he blows. It's all like this scheme. To well, I know, and that's why. So my biggest gripe with hip-hop, rap, um, or just the music industry. I'm not even going to pick on hip-hop or rap because I'm a part of it. I love it. Um, in this era... Nobody's trying to make money off the art. Mm. They're trying to make money off the artist. Right. That's all I'm going to say. Right. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I had an artist come in here one time, and he was he said, uh, he's like, he's like, bro. <laughs> he basically broke down how his whole rap career was him just paying to exist. He's like, I, all I did was, like, just kept paying money to be in it. He's like, but I was never in it. He's like, I just kept paying it. And he, he finally figured out that everybody caught wind of him paying so everybody knew to just hit this guy as a bankroll. Like, oh, you want to do a feature? Come this way. Oh, you want to do a beat? Come this way. Come video? Come this way. And then he just realized he was just paying a to custo. exist. Yeah, he was just paying to exist. And at the end of the day, and it's funny you said Ice Cube, right? Yeah. Ice Cube was doing a podcast, uh, I don't know what, with like E-40 and shit like that when they were promoting the album that they dropped in 2023, the Mount uh, Westmore. It was like Too Short, E-40, Snoop, and Ice Cube as one big group. The album was sweet. I checked it out. I was like, God damn, they got some bangers out here. And uh, they, during this interview, 
uh, they asked like E40, like, you know, about charging for features and shit like that. They were like, Q, you know, what's the most you ever got paid to do a feature? He says, zero dollars. He goes, I never charge for features. That's was Ice Cube's words. He goes, either I fuck with you mm. and I fuck with the song and I want to make the song and I want to stand next to you or I don't. And I like that approach. Listen. I like that approach of you can't pay me to be my friend, bro. And you can't pay to use my likeness as a, as a, I vouch for you. I've been paid for features before, right? And I'm no big rap star, you know what I'm saying? But I got my cool little following and I, I've done some cool things and, 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 and I, I have some cool accomplishments that I can say, yeah, bro, I'm dope at this shit. DJ Premier done played my shit for the world. Static Selector done played my shit for the world. You know, I was on Apollo Brown's album and, you know, I got things that I could say, yeah, I'm dope at this shit. And I got my cool little following. I sell my T-shirts and vinyl. So if you want to, you know, if you're going to hit me up to rock a show and, and what, if you're going to put me to work, throw me something. Nothing crazy. I, I ain't trying to. And I think I've kind of changed since I saw that Ice Cube interview, where it's just kind of like, I'm not worried about your budget. I'm worried what that beat sound like. This goes back to our last conversation. What is the art? How many of us are here for the art? Right. Or maybe we should stop calling ourselves artists. Simple as that. How many of us are here for the picture we're trying to paint? Now it's just entrepreneurship. Right. Yep. Now it's just that you're a businessman. But just to let you know on an update on that, we did have guests come on here that said that they tried to buy a feature from Ice Cube and they <laughs> Ice Cube charged them to listen to the song. <laughs> 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 and uh he he had a whole priceless <laughs> Yeah, straight up. No lie. Like I believe it. Yeah. Hey, so. like I said, I never said what well, he's he was being honest or whatnot. But at that time, he probably was. At the time you were listening to the interview about him talking about it, he probably was. And then at some point, he's like, fuck this shit. We got to make our money. You know, it's there's so many conversations, even with the Eminem conversation, uh, that the best point somebody's ever brought up to me about Eminem is that he's a business. And you got to realize he is a business. Like, yeah. even though he is an artist and I'm sure he's not going to do something he doesn't want to do or whatever. No, yeah. But I'm sure he's he is his own ecosystem and there's ways that they maneuver and reasons that they to work with certain people and might not work with certain other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah. there's nothing and that doesn't and again that doesn't contradict anything that I'm saying about art. Yeah. I would like to say there's no amount of money you could pay me to do a song that I know is whack. The art got to be dope first. And then we could also talk about the business side. What do I get publishing? Do I get writing? What's the percent? What's the this? Blah, 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 blah. But yo, the art got to be dope. Or none of this matters. Well, you know, the way I look at it now is, you know how boxing matches are set up. A boxing match is usually set up between two guys that both have substantial fan bases and that can bring people to the audience, right? And I feel like the rap game is like that now, too, where a rapper is only going to have a feature of another rapper that's equivalent or can help him build his own fan base. I'm going to take your fan base, we're going to take my fan base, and we're going to generate tens to hundreds of millions of views together. So the rap game is kind of like the boxing game now where they're trying to unite these people to make these songs. That's why you're seeing a lot of the same artists reunite because they're almost like, we're doing it and it's working, so let's just keep doing it. Like yep. 42 Doug and Lil Baby, I'm not to, not to say that either one of them is paying each other, but they realize, yo, this is working, let's keep doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So that's how like, a lot of people get confused. Like, why aren't you doing a feature with me? Why aren't you doing a feature? Well, it's because it's like, well, your name isn't going to bring us any more attention. But that's the sucky part because it goes back to your conversation of, well, what about the actual music sounding good? What about the talent being involved in it? What about the fact that there's actual... Like, cats don't care at all. Yeah. Most cats. And, yeah. and you'll see, and, 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 and for the cats who do and, and, and they make music purely art, you know, that doesn't mean they don't get paid off or they don't tour or whatever, but they're they're more purist with the art. Sometimes it's, 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 it works to their advantage and it's almost... That's their hook. I don't want to say gimmick, but that's their hook to the audience. The audience says, you know, I fuck with this artist because they're the real deal. They're not just trying to make a hit song. There is, I actually fuck with their music. And so I don't know, man. I don't got all the answers, but uh, not that it was a question, but it's just kind of like, 
<laughs> it's just kind of like sometimes I feel like you do have a lot of solid oh, ass man. points, man. Man, you, hey, I that's just, why I hit you up today. I was like, bro, I need to have Valid back on because I was like, <laughs> out of everybody who's come on the podcast, there's like only a handful of people that are just straight up truthful in their response to everything, but also have such a wealth of knowledge of hip hop and rap itself. You know what? I will take time out. Um, rest in peace to because uh, you know I talked about Dylan here and stuff like that. Rest in peace to Amp Fiddler, who just passed away. And for mm. those that don't know, okay, this is one of the most important men in the history of Detroit music. Um, played for the Funkadelics with George Clinton and everything. Played with Prince. Played with uh, Google and Wikipedia him. You know, he, he's a, a music legend from Detroit. And he was the one that introduced a young Jay Dilla to the MPC and kind of showed him how it worked when Dilla was young and he would have Slum Village over at his basement because he had a home studio and everything. So And he just passed away a few weeks ago yeah. um, and they had a big event for him at Marble Bar that I unfortunately couldn't make it to and it pissed me off. And um, that's beyond hip-hop, beyond rap, Detroit culture, Detroit music, old head, new head, it don't matter. Uh, much love to Ant Fiddler, man. Rest man. in peace. And he was always, anytime I, I talked to him, he was just a cool, cordial, relaxed guy. And uh, you get to spend time with him. I can't say I spent time with him. DJ Head did. DJ Head and DJ Des, who I'm pretty mm -hmm. close with, they did spend a lot of time with him. Um, but every time I would bump into him at shows and stuff, we would have a brief conversation. Hey, how you doing? You know, he 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 was that legend. He was like, you know, like like Ric Flair to us. You know, as far as like breaking a dollar like when it comes to Detroit music, like oh shit, dog, yeah. you're Ant Fiddler. You know what I'm saying? And 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 his because you said knowledge and a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. It was like that's a real like oracle that just passed away. You know what I'm saying? Man. And he'll live forever through the music. He'll live forever in this city because his music. Was it crossed so many genres and it's it, he's played and, and produced for so many of the biggest artists in the world, in or not from Detroit, whatever the fuck, and uh, he influenced hip hop and jazz and funk and soul and it's just like he'll live forever. For sure. And but um, beautifully said, bro. And um, Fiddler, do you still got time? I still got time, brother. Okay, I'm in no rush. Back and I'll be right back. Yeah, you got a water by any chance laying yeah, around? Yeah, get your water. My man. Um, we were just talking about. The industry's fucked up. No, I was kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, the deep history of uh, Detroit hip hop and you know Fiddler, right? Um, and Fiddler, yep. A guy. I'm sorry to say that I literally never heard of, but when mm -hmm. I I seen how when he passed away, how many blogs were reposting him, like, oh, what's happening? And even one time I seen Jay Dilla. Uh, there was a reel where some guy explained Jay Dilla's process. He was just like talking about his process a little bit, and like the the v, the the Instagram reel had like a thousand comments, five hundred thousand likes, all the stuff. On and uh, dude, I I I know who he is, but I never really got deep into it. And I didn't know that people gave a fuck to this day. It's almost like people just. I don't want to get back on the topic, brother. Yeah. yeah. But this is what I said last time. Yeah. All around the world for Dilla Day. Yeah. In multiple cities across America, multiple cities across the world. They celebrate his birthday. It's crazy. It's called Dilla Day. Across the world. That's just, that's what I was trying to say last time I was uh, here. What do you think, uh, when you hear sounds coming from here, as far as producers and everything sounds, mm -hmm. uh, what sounds do you hear that resonate mostly with the earlier times of Detroit hip hop and where it emerged from? Even if you go back to Motown sound. It's a soulful ass city, bro. It's something about that Detroit soul. And um Yeah, cats like Black Milk captured that. Again, Dilla. DJ Dez captures that. It's something about that soul, man. And um What about the cats then now though? Like, the cats that are now well, you know, Black Milk just dropped an album that's really fucking dope and 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 he's sweet. Apollo Brown. And if you're talking about more like now as far as that's really like popping on the radio and like the, the young kids are aware of that has that version of 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 Detroit um I don't know but again yeah. it, I, I, again Detroit's not one thing so the hell of a sound is just as Detroit as motherfucking the Temptations from Motown. You see what I'm saying? Right. That that Undertaker bell when it hits in, in these and it sounds like a horror movie, but the, the shit banging. That's Detroit shit too, you know. And 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 I don't I don't think it's any more or less Detroit than 
the Slum Village sound and the Black Milk sound. Uh-huh. You know, it's all Detroit. It's all dope. So Black Milk's still rocking, man? That's crazy. Black Milk's still rocking, and he's rocking at a high level. You know, he was on Mass Appeal. He was on Nas's uh, uh, label for a minute. Uh, I don't know if he still is or not. Man, I think he is. Yeah, I think the new album that just came out, and I know he's touring in Europe. I just saw him post something. Um, How lucrative is, like, that This when we're talking about this type of hip-hop, like hip-hop, 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 how lucrative is it? Is it still is it like just as lucrative as the mainstream rappers are? Uh, you know what, kid? I know what I can do without a label behind me. Okay? So there's prominent labels in that lane of hip hop. You get what I'm saying? And when you say that, like when you ask me that question, it's like, well, I'm not just thinking of of black milk. Mac Miller, bro, toward to his later days was doing what I would consider, quote unquote, like pure, more pure artistic hip hop. I'm going to put J. Cole in that bucket. This is a real MC and he's got soulful ass boom bap style beats. So are we going to count his pockets in that too? Or are we only, or do, when you ask that question, do you only mean like more underground, no, like, I'm talking about not the, much mainstream attention. How much money is in that? Like Black Milk is not mainstream, right? I wouldn't say he's mainstream, no. Right. So I'm talking about cats like that where it's like they're very well known in the hip hop community. They're very well sure. known to hip hop heads and okay. everything like that. But like are they making pay? Like that's the thing cuz even like I'm not going to I was I was going to say a name of an artist that I know is super super talented that you you talked about earlier, but I mean he's he's working a job. He's not like making a living off of his music. You know what I'm saying? Like Okay. So it's like a, that's an interesting conversation too of like starving artist mentality. Not even that it's a mentality, but the realities of being a starving artist. That even though you are a purist, as far as your artistry is concerned, staying broke fucking sucks. Uh, I don't think Black Milk is broke. I'm not talking about Black, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about black Milk. All right, all right. Uh, shout out to Black Milk, man. He's mm-hmm. cool, dude, and um, I think he's one of the all time greats. Now, I, I ain't counting these cats' pockets, bro. Yeah. You know, um, do I see them? Um, do I see underground hip hop cats living well? Yes, I have. Okay. Yes, I have. And obviously, do I also see um some doing it bigger than others? Yeah, man. Look at fucking Griselda from the ground up. I'm gonna put them in the same fucking bucket with 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 the real underground hip hop, whatever the fuck that means. They did it. Freddie Gibbs did it. Motherfucking uh, Duck Down Records does it. You know what I'm saying? Sean Price was doing it. Do I know exactly what they're making? No. Do I know exactly what Meek Mill is making and Drake? No. It's easy to see, though. Like, what the fuck's going on with those motherfuckers? You can see that shit. You can see it just in the in the lifestyle and, like... I don't think I don't think Drake's success is an illusion. I don't think his. Oh, me either. <laughs> I think that but I also don't think Black Milk's is either. Yeah, it's just hard to it's hard to know. That's the. And sk- I think he I think Black Milk is is living just fine. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think he's doing just fine. And he's produced for Busta Rhymes and all these cats. So, the music world is way bigger, and there's more people in it than just the people under the spotlight. And there's people with fan bases that don't necessarily even need the spotlight on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, MF Doom, when he died, the whole world... But he, I don't think MF Doom ever had a fucking song on the radio. Mm. I don't know if his videos were ever played on MTV. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Don't You don't have to fact check me because I'm not making that claim. Yeah, it's a good point you're making. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, but he built an audience that's big enough and a cult following... You know, and there's record labels that are good at this. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Duck Down, Stone's Throw, uh, 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 Griselda. Uh, you know, there's other independent labels out there. And not just in rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's other genres of music that, okay, we're an underground label, but they got some money and they pump it into their artists. And usually, just to t- tie two conversations in one, the followings of those types of labels and artists don't fall for the fuckery and bullshit. They, they, they're they judging you based on what fucking comes out the speaker when they hit play. They don't care what big feature you got. So in that arena, you got to be good. It can't be bought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's You can't just put like a hot Instagram model in your video and hope to blow up off it because the following that you're trying to appease, 
they it might actually hurt you with that following because they're the real music connoisseurs. Yeah, you know that's kind of. I, I wish I could go back in time and remember the days where I was actually because there was a time where I was like actually aggressively looking for hip hop and rap to listen to underground people I haven't heard of people who weren't in the mainstream. I was actively yeah. looking for it. And then I don't know when the fuck it all ended, but I basically just stopped. And we, I think we talked about this last time. I just stopped giving a fuck about looking anymore. I forgot what the fuck happened. Here's the name. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a salute. Uh, motherfucking terminology, bro. He been doing it for years now. He dropped six albums a year. He did a whole. He did two albums with Paul Wall. He's always touring. He's doing numbers. He don't need no motherfucking radio play. He don't need no major blog to post his shit. He has a cult following, dog. Oh, Terminology, hip hop legend. You know what I'm saying? Dope, dope, super dope MC. And he just, I don't know the the formula that worked for him. And also, to all independent artists, there is no formula. Yeah. There's no formula. What worked for terminology might not work for valid. But what worked for valid might not work for you. And mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. Every, every, every artist has their own story. And... You know, it, it, just figure it out. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's the, the 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 whole thing for me and for every rapper or anybody in the entertainment industry is you don't want to be in it and feel like a loser. That's the whole fucking thing. Like you don't want money be... ain't gonna make me feel like a winner either. Really, there's a lot of fucking br- uh, rich ass losers that are socking the fucking <laughs> face because they're douchebags. You're yeah. still a loser. You're just a rich loser. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what's a winner in life? You know what? You want to know what's a winner in life? Mm. A man of uh, or a woman of integrity. I'm a winner. You know why? Because you just told me earlier, you know, when I come here, I give you the I'm going to say some shit from the fucking soul that I really feel, whether I'm right or wrong. I'm, I'm not going to fake the funk. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do no sucker shit. To me, that's a winner. Whether you got a nine to five or whether you're the world's famous, biggest fucking famous rapper in the world. Yeah. A lot of these rappers are fucking douchebags. They're still losers with money, with or without money. You're still a douchebag. I can't change. You know that money don't change your character, bro. And that's and, and maybe, you know, that to me is how at least I distinguish a fucking loser from a winner. Can I walk into your house? Can I see can I see how you talk to your to your 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 loved ones? Do you take care of your family? If your best friend calls you, are you going to be there? These are the things that make you a winner in life. Mm. These are the things that when you die, people are going to say that was a real fucking man or woman or she she or he whatever was a real one. Yeah. They don't give a fuck what's in your bank account. And with the, everybody's so, yeah, it's like the money thing is soaked into everybody's mind so much that it's like the only way to uh, kind of gauge somebody's success in life. Like I was, you know, it was like, and like, most people do, and, and I'm sure. I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to cut you're you good, off. You're good. This is, uh, right now, cap, cap, cap. This motherfucker. I want the money. Go ahead, bro. You know, 80, 90 percent of the humans walking Earth are like you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not you. I'm saying the oh, guy yeah. that's probably going to make fun of me for saying bro, what I, I have, just said. I know so. I have a lot of millionaire friends, and they're fucking miserable people. They're they're still, so they're still losing yeah. at life. They hate. They don't with like money. their lives. Yeah, they're miserable. Damn, you got money and you're still losing? You really suck at this game, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you got money and you're still unhappy? No. Oh, you really lost at this fucking game, bro. You suck. Yeah, exactly. You're the biggest fucking loser. It's just because... We, I think we do have Your to, family hates you Your kids fucking hate you You're I, a terrible dad I do Terrible husband Terrible You suck I don't care what your Debit card limit is I don't give a fuck I think we have to get off Social media dude I think that's what oh, we yeah. have to do I think social media Is really implanting This whole idea of life And what life needs to be And even though We're conscious enough To know it's bullshit We pay attention to it enough That it just gets Into your system anyway like, you're naturally comparing, even though you know consciously, like, I don't give a fuck about what he's doing, but, like, you're just looking at shit all day long that eventually it just soaks in your brain, like, this is what success is, this is what status is, this is what a successful rapper looks like. So, and that's why, like, when, you know, yeah. well, again, when we, when we talk about these underground hip-hop artists, yo, I don't know how much money they're making, but the fact that they're making money of doing something that they love so much that they would do fucking for free, yeah, they're winners, bro, that's they're winning. Look. You're doing what you love, and you're making a living off of it. You know? They're winning, man. Yeah. You know, I just got a placement in a movie. I just had this conversation earlier today with my homie who was at my apartment, dog. We're talking, and uh, I was telling him, like, dog, you know, I just got paid out for, for a movie placement I got really? that's coming out this year. And I told him, I go, how come a dollar that comes from music tastes way better to me 
than any dollar I've ever earned at a day job. And so it just kind of goes like, yo, to me, when you can do what you love to do and you can provide a decent, safe, comfortable living for yourself, you won. That's it. You won. That's all you need. You won. If you rap, if, if you making, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, enough, whether if you love painting cars and you make enough to provide for yourself and you're safe and you're okay and your kids can go to school with some clean clothes on and you're doing it off painting cars, you beat life. Yeah. You beat life. The second you say, oh, shit, but this this job over here, which I fucking hate the job, but I'd rather go do this and because it pays twice as much as painting cars and you go do that and you're no longer happy, you start losing that life, bro. Facts. You're losing the, the video game. You're 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 losing. It's like Sims, bro. Your character's not happy. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. know. I, I want to feel fulfillment. I want to feel joy. I want to feel happiness. To me, that's winning. You ain't gonna do. You ain't gonna be happy and joyful without money. Yeah. But bro, that ain't the whole fucking thing. It's a balancing act. How do you want to make it? You know what I'm saying? And 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 how much do you need to feel okay and comfortable and satisfied for you and your family? And can you make it happen doing what you love to do and and things of that nature? You know what I'm saying? If 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 you love, let's say you know you love playing soccer or you love hooping or some shit, whatever sport it is you love, and you come to a a, a crossroad where you can get a day job making, I don't fucking know. 150 60 k a year. I don't fucking know. You know, it's a good six figure income. But some Euro League is like, yo, we got 80, 90 k for you to come do what you love to do. A lot of people are gonna choose, but like, fuck that. I'm young once. Let me go hoop it up in Europe and make whatever the fuck I make, even if it's less than that. That money, even though it's not more as much, it tastes better. It feels better making money like this than that. Yeah. Because it's not just about the money. It's, it's about the, just, I'm getting I'm getting every, paid in a different yeah, way. Every hour that you're spending doing something you don't like is just like a, another time towards the, the grave of you just bullshitting your life and not doing something you enjoy. Oh, like, but man, when I look at my bank account, though, dog, and I see them bro, figures, I'm not gonna dog. Lie, like last night I was tripping, bro. I was like staring at my computer screen. It was like t- like four in the morning and shit. And then I was looking at my computer screen and I was like, <laughs> bro. Because I thought about age 18 to like 30. And I was like, what the fuck did you do with that time? Because you were just so focused on making money. It's a blur. I almost cried. I'm not going to lie. I was like, fuck, you idiot. What the fuck did you do? So now I'm at a point where it's like, all right, yo, move with intention and move with truth. Like, what do you really love about life? What do you really want to do with life? And make sure that when you're doing it, that your genuine intention is behind it at all times. Mm -hmm. Like, to never compromise it by doing something that's going to make my life worse or do something that makes me feel worse about who I am as a person. So now I'm moving with a different type of time. And and all I want to do is actually talk. Like, one day I hope I could just talk to the young cats and be like, bro, don't fuck around. Like, stop fucking around. I know party, like, till you're 18, 19, 20, 21, like, have fun, whatever, to live a life as a kid and all that. But then there comes a certain point where you have to figure out what you want to do with this life and stick to it and just keep fucking pushing that forward. That's what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? But when I think about these kids now that are starting up fake rap careers and they just change their Instagram bio to rapper, so now they're a rapper, it's like, I want to hit them up and just be like, bro, like, don't, fi- unless you really want to do that shit, bro, don't fucking do it. I know your friends in high school might have told you you're good at rapping, but that don't matter unless you really want to do it. You know when people come on my couch? Put your heart and soul in there. Yeah, you know when people come on the couch and say why they started a rap career? You know what a lot of them say? Uh, I started rapping because my dad died and I wanted to, like, tell his life story through my lens. And then, and then like, they never follow through with the rap career and they don't really give a fuck. Or some of them be like, I just got out of prison, bro, and I felt like this is the time to tell everybody about my story. And it's like, that's not, that's still not a good read. Like, and you can see it in their face. Like, they're just starting rap careers because of an instance, but not because they love rap. They love hip-hop. They love creating music. Music. That's what hip-hop and rap is. The basis of is creating music and getting a story out, right? But it's not that for them. It's more just like, I'm just – or I want to get rich. Like, it's those – combinations of I, I, I never understood that i want to get rich want to go be go become a fucking doctor yeah exactly go become a lawyer why why this it's the if it's if it's you want to become rich i know why it's the most accessible thing to do because think about it like that's you, what i was saying earlier I was like, you go oh you want to get rich go pick up a go uh 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 uh, uh pick a way more difficult 
lane of music then. Ah. But think about it like this. The reason, That's what, the reason you know what I'm saying? But think about it. The reason rap is the easiest thing to get into is all you need is a beat and a microphone, right? And then you can put it out and push it and get it spread across. Well, I was hanging fruit on the tree, brother. That's what yeah. I was saying earlier when the conversation started. That's why the payola model works more in rap than in the industry of other genres of music. Facts. Because nobody really gives a fuck. The DJ's going to say, yo, pay my price. I'll play your fucking song. Yeah. That shit gets circulated enough. It's all you know. And then he's the most popular person and you're subscribed to everything. It doesn't do. work in jazz. <clears throat> right. That doesn't work often in other genres. It, it probably still does, but not to the same not, degree. Not to that degree. Did you hear? Um, so like the game is going after Eminem. And I know it's been like a long time. Yeah, thing. I, was, I, 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 I don't know. It's though. an interesting thing because you know what's funny about Revival? I actually listened to Revival. I thought it was a really good song. Easy Mill. I don't think Eminem even put his name as a feature. I think it was like a surprise feature on uh, Easy Mill's track Realist. And uh, basically, there's a whole bar about Eminem where he's talking about how he's so big, basically, that the reason you're not hearing him in the clubs and certain things is because his music is getting played in, like, way fucking bigger places, basically. Like, he's just, like, he's just doing such big things that he's not even worried about being played in a little club or, he like... Said, in, I think what he said was in the game, he's like, yeah, the reason why they play still your, play your shit is because you're still performing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh... And then the game just responded back to Eminem, basically saying, like, I, you've released all these tapes, and I've never listened to one of your tapes. You've done all these accomplishments. You've done all these things, but we're not listening to you. We're not listening to you over here. Wherever he's side he's talking about, they're not listening to him. So that's his response. And it's almost like, what's the fucking point of this shit? Like, um, I guess my only thoughts on that is M's one of the goats, bro. You know, obviously, we, you know, the shit he did when he was, especially when he was younger, like the Marshall Mathers LP is one of the greatest hip hop albums ever. Yeah. Like, you know, up there, in my opinion, with with Illmatic and Tribe Called Quest, Lower End Theory and 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 and, and Equemini, Outcast. Marshall Mathers LP is up there. Now, I think sometimes a song or an artist or an album or or whatever can become too big for its own good. It becomes so big that it's like almost corny to play it because it's so popular. It's like, especially for DJs, DJs thrive on playing the hot new shit, playing what you haven't heard yet, like breaking records. So when you, it's like a, it's like a knock-knock joke. Like, if you're a comedian, you're telling the joke everybody already knows. So if you're a DJ or whatever, it's like, well, you don't really get points for playing the song that everybody on the street <laughs> knows. Like that, that, And I think there's a little bit of that where something becomes so popular that it almost becomes viewed as corny, played out, you know, dated, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's not, like, hip to, like, play that record. And uh, I think Eminem sometimes, unfortunately, is a victim of that. It's like, you're so famous and so big that it works against you. Right. You're so mainstream that it works against you, bro. You know what I'm saying? and But M's great. And I think the Especially game is a sweet rapper, too, man. And, it, and it's just kind of like... I, I think rapper beef is is mad corny to me. When rappers beef out, I think it's mad corny to me. It's music, bro. I'm never, to my knowledge, and I could be wrong, I don't know of a rock band making a song disrespecting another rock band. I've never heard, now there's probably competition and, and, and people who don't like each other, and I'm not no like rock band, rock music expert like that, so don't, you know, quote me um but to my knowledge you know is it is it, it, just weird to me um well it's the only hip-hop and rap is probably the only form of music where there's a competitive element like you know mm -hmm. people do street battles and rap battles I get and all it. that and, type and, of and, and i and i love that element that that's the sports side of rap yeah. and emceeing and shit but to call someone out for no reason right is kind of corny to me right and and i love the game and I love, you know, what he's done in his career. He's got well, bangers. He's got well, classics. Let's break it down a little bit. Let's let's look at it real it's quick. It's like, well, game, why, 
What did M say or do to you to throw a shot at him? Let's look at the lines real quick just to see. I mean, I already listened to Realist. I already know the lines and the bars and everything, but I want to just see what, what the game says. So he said, I never heard you in a club. I never heard you in a bar. 11 albums and 10. 11, 11 albums and 10 never got played inside of my car. I'd rather listen to Sitch, Snitch 9 like 69 times and participate in a 69 with 69 nuns to listen to you. I guess he's making fun of Eminem's wordplay there. You're a Karen, call the cops, tell him to take a black man on your block with a Glock and he gets cocked and then tattoo his face is a star. <laughs> tattoo his face is a star and a teardrop. So I guess he's playing off Eminem's wordplay in that. Hey. Eminem's realist line was, all the envious rappers, I'd torch if I'm on a joint with them and this is the only retort is i'm not played in the clubs motherfucker put a cork in it only reason they still play your shit in the clubs is still is because you still perform in them but it's like all right what the fuck <laughs> like, what, just, what is the basis gonna, of this like what is the the this is my thing if you're gonna make a diss song <laughs> if you're gonna if i'm gonna as an mc gonna go in the booth and write about another man <laughs> that person better have truly done something disrespectful to me. Right. Something, bro. Something. Right. Like, we look back at Jay-Z and Nas, and we say, oh, God damn, that shit was, like, there's a personal, there was a personal rivalry there. You know what I'm saying? Shit got deep. Obviously, 50, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 50 and Ja Rule, a uh, 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 Pac and Big. Like, there's, it's, 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 it's something is there. When one rapper just out of nowhere takes a shot at another rapper just for nothing, it's kind of corny to me. It's like, why are you even thinking about it that much? Like, why are you thinking about anybody else that much unless they wronged you or unless they did something to you, like, or said something to you? Like, I don't know. I, I, I guess that's where I'm like, why is Game mad at? What did Eminem possibly do to the game? To make game say, I'm gonna write a six minute diss song about you. That sounds more like a love letter than a diss <laughs> song, bro. You know so much about this guy, and you're, you, he's in your mind that much. Yeah. Do you got? Are you Stan? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, now look. Again, I like the game. I like him. I got no problem with him. Is is is? I'm a fan. He's got classic albums, classic verses, classic songs. You know, and. I it's just I just don't know what what is is there a piece of the story we don't know that yeah. pissed the game off and he's like you know what fuck this guy that is something in real life that he's never well, spoken you know, about publicly you know what mostly I mean I'm not gonna assume I don't know what happened with the game and MM in particular but a lot of things that happen is once you start discussing the goats game the you know the goat the rankings the top ten rappers of all time these types of things and then that gets spread on media blogs and news stations and everything like that, then a conversation always opens up because if you talk about t top 10 rappers of all time and you leave out Eminem, then Eminem might feel salty about it. And then so another media platform might go, well, why isn't Eminem on your top list? And then the game where some rapper might be like, well, this is the reason that he doesn't belong on the list. And then Eminem might hear it and go like, what the fuck? And, you know, respond to that. And that's just, it's mostly media that makes rappers go after each other most of the fucking time. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, bro. I, I don't think Eminem gives a fuck whose list he's on or I not. I don't know, bro, but he does. Because he this motherfucker goes to Australia and 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 he d there's an, uh, uh, an arena full the size of the you know whole why? fucking you know Macomb, why? Michigan. But you know why you know he does? Because even in one of his interviews he did, he said that he went to the Grammys and he lost to some bullshit artist that went on stage and he said he never went to the Grammys again after that because the person up there wasn't, you know... Big enough. I, I've, I've seen that. Shit too. like that. So, And Eminem always speaks about how other rappers feel about him in interviews. Like, everybody always thinks, like, he doesn't give a fuck. Well, if you watch his interviews, he gives he a fuck. MGK, mm -hmm. when he was beefing with MGK. He was, like, if you've seen the passion in his fucking eyes talking about that piece, that fucking rapper, then it's, like, showing you that the rap game has its own community of ego Absolutely. and care that... If you're gonna attack me, I'm gonna. We're attack like you UFC back. fighters. Yeah, type um, shit, and it's kind of cool in its own respect. Like if there is. was no beef at all, there would be a little bit less intrigue. As long as you keep it on the tracks and you don't keep it anywhere else besides the tracks. Right. I. I. I and I, again, I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Um. You never rap beef. There's. I won't say any names. There's. <laughs> there's a couple of Detroit cats that, but it, it comes from a real life issue. Oh, okay. That that lied to me. Or they didn't do business straight, 
and things of that nature. Right. I would rather meet you face to face and let's have a conversation about what the fuck just happened. You did me dirty or whatever the fuck. Putting rhyme, putting words together that rhyme about you. <laughs> what is, I mean, I don't know, bro. I, I think it's uh, um. What else, I mean, like, how else do they sport it though? Like, let's say you say you're a multi million dollar rapper, the only thing you have left is to be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I guess... you can't go play basketball. Some people are comp- like, are you competitive? Like, do you find competition in anything outside of like in just in your general life? Well, yeah, you know, if I'm fucking playing Mortal Kombat with my homie, I'm like, all right, let's go, bro, let's pick up the sticks. Play, and if, but no, play... I'm not like a big gamer or oh, nothing, okay, but okay. at that moment. It's like Michael Jordan comes out. It's like I can't lose, bro. So I get that. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just, it's, 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 it's. How old is the game? How old is Eminem? How uh, you get what I'm saying? Old as fuck. They're, they're 50. <laughs> and I'm not trying to say that either. I mean, rap game type, and the rap game being 50 is old, bro. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I hear what you're that's saying. A fine age, like you know, you're still kind of young, but in the rap game, being 50 is fucking old, bro. Let's get real. I mean, what it started off talking about, with what it is and what it's transcended to, like, but, you can but only talk about so much let, shit. Let, let's switch topics, though, but we got mm. um, hip-hop itself evolves. Yeah. So at one time, you were probably right. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Because when I say hip-hop, Maybe me and you are not imagining the same thing in our heads. Right. When right. you say rap and hip hop, I'm taking the whole thing, bro. That's why from KRS One all the way to Twenty One Savage, the hip hop is fucking gigantic See, to me, and I'm, there's a million subgenres of it. I'm so fucked up because my mind. I used to be when like, when you say hip hop and rap, like you're thinking like, who's the hottest artist on the blogs, the websites, and yeah, like YouTube yeah. and TikTok, and the, who's getting played on the radio, and it's like a smaller. Thing where you're right, the the people who are on the radio and getting those main spins and shit like that, those artists are in their young twenties probably. Yeah. But when I say hip hop, I'm thinking of the whole entire thing, bro. I'm thinking of rappers that don't even rap in English. What about them? Do they count? Do Italian rappers count? Do rappers in Nigeria count? That's hip hop. What about the kids in in Tokyo that are spinning on their heads, still break dancing, like is that? That's hip hop. So when, when somebody says those two syllables together to me, hip hop, I'm thinking of the whole universe, bro. And I do include the trap, the young shit, the mumble rap, the whole fucking thing. The tree has grown so big where there's a million branches now. So you're right. It, when you say the rap game, motherfucking yo, uh, Nas is 50 years old. Jay is over 50, and they can drop like you know what I'm saying. And and and. I don't know. No, you're absolutely right. This is why it's so interesting to talk to you because it's like a reminder. It's like because I'm so, you know, involved in the Detroit underground scene that I forgot about like, bro, you know, there's a whole world of people listening to hip hop and rap that's nothing to do with what the fuck you're listening to or anything to do with that. And and the same goes for me, though, too. So when I when I go and I listen to. but these guys suck ass, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like a lot of the a lot of the guys, like we talked about, the popular rappers suck ass to me, bro. <laughs> like I just be straight up, bro. He said it, not me. I'm saying it personally. Like I listen to a lot of these cats, and I've I've literally listened to song after song after song of the top trending artists from a lot of different cities, and I'm like, what the fuck are we talking about? Like I literally just listen. I'm like, that's my mind goes like, what the Who's fuck? Who's hot are right we... now that I like? That's 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 like hot. Detro- okay, let's talk about Detroit Underground. Let's talk about Detroit. You asked me that last time. Okay. And um. I threw some names out there, but in general, I fucks with Larry June a lot, man. I Me like too. Larry Me, June. Larry June is heat. Larry June is dope. He's my newest favorite artist. For there sure. you go, Pound it. But yeah, that's dog. like that's like yeah. straight up like that still is fucking straight up hip hop though. You think so? I think his shit is pretty. I, I hear you. I hear you. It's not like, and, and that's where this shit gets so weird and subjective. Where it's like. I don't know, bro. It's a fucking beat. Well, let me ask you this. Who's and, the, and somebody rapping over it. Who's I the, like it. <laughs> t- t- who's the greatest new artist for your personal playlist that you found? New. New. To the f- last five years. Oh, last five years that came out. Hmm. I don't know if there is one. Uh, I don't know if there is one. Because um, there is newer artists. I don't have to go back to the 90s or 80s and say, yo, they're one of the dopest. But in the last, okay, let's say five to ten years... Yo, um, I remember when I learned about Freddie Gibbs, and he was fucking sweet as fuck to me. Um, uh, uh, Larry June is one. You know, he's been out for a few years now, but Larry June is dope. 
who else in the last five to ten years really like oh. fucking? I got a question. What do you guys think about Tyler the Creator? Yeah, oh, Tyler the Creator is, is is dope. You know what I'm saying? And and, and J Cole and Kendrick and 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 they're not new anymore. Um, do you think there's a reason that it's harder to find newer hip hop artists like? that are hip hop artists in the past five years, then it's easier. And if you look at like the 90s, the eighties, nineties and two thousands, you can find a thousand. You think something happened with hip hop and rap that made it like harder to find these guys or that they're just, I think, uh, yeah, I do. And it goes back to the first conversation. We oh, had. just pay all <laughs> straight mm-hmm. up. Music ain't yeah. gotta be good. I can just pay that DJ to play it. Yeah. That's what happens. And it, di- it, 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 it deludes the quality of the art. Mm. When, 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 um, business is the primary purpose over the art. It's almost unethical. Well, <laughs> talk about, uh, your project coming out, man. Uh, you said you got something releasing pretty soon. Yeah. The Bronco tape. Uh, um, is it called the Bronco tape? Good question. So. A lot of okay. You see, I'm wearing the WWF sweater. You know what I'm saying? Fire. Uh, thank you. A lot of the people who 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 fuck with me and my music, a lot of them are wrestling heads, right? Because I'm a huge wrestling head. So so, um, that's number one. And for any wrestling heads out there that are familiar with all elite wrestling, AEW, Ethan Page, and shit like that, he's a pretty well known uh, superstar in AEW and ROH and shit like that. Uh, I do his theme music for his YouTube channel. So oh. shout out to my guy, All Ego, Ethan Page. Sick. So that's my guy. And um, so a lot of wrestling heads fuck with me. And also, people know, and we talked about this last time I was here, I'm American Serbian. I'm first generation Serbian, you know, here. And a lot of people throughout ex-Yugoslavia, the Balkans, the hip-hop heads out there, they fuck with my shit a lot because I did a project and I had like Boldy James on it and shit like that it was the Plum Brandy EP and Dilla's mom kind of hooked that up. You know what I'm saying? So that was that. So I recently in the last couple of years discovered huh. that like back in the 50s, bro, there was a Serbian pro wrestler, which blew my mind. And his name was Bronco Lubic. And I'm Googling this guy and I'm like seeing that when he was like an old guy, he was like already like an old referee manager by the 80s. But he was like influential in like Texas and Canada. And he played a a role in like Stone Cold Steve Austin's career and Undertaker's career. And he was like Macho Man's dad's tag team partner, like way back, like black and white TV, like 50s, 60s and shit. And I'm like reading stories and I'm finding shit about it, finding out shit about this guy online. And he was a mean looking motherfucker. And I'm like, the Bronco tape is is perfect for me. It's wrestling shit. It's still got the the Balkan Eastern European uh, twist on it. It's the Bronco tape, baby. Call me Big Bronco. Cool. And uh, and I'm just treating. I'm not really calling it an album. I'm calling it a mixtape because, like the Bill and Isaiah album I did with Stretch, Mommy Hilo album I did in 2019. I don't really like to just put a bunch of songs together and call it an album. You know, even if the songs are fire, there needs to be something that ties these songs together. Certain, whether the way it's produced, certain callbacks lyrically that you like. That's what makes um, Doggy Style a great album. Uh, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP. He keeps bringing up the same topics over and over again throughout the album. Uh, Kendrick's, his albums are actual stories that play out like a movie. So that to me is is what makes a dope album. Mm. And what makes it an album and not just a collection of songs. Right. People may have a different view on that, and that's fine. To me, when you just have a dope collection of songs, I call it a mixtape. So the Bronco tape is just bangers, just dope ass features, dope ass beats, dope verses. And 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 I'm treating this like this is my like lost tapes. This is my like G unit, my G unit mixtape or dip set mixtape for the streets, you know, some shit like that. Sure. So I got like a lot of dope features and nothing really that ties these songs together. It's just a dope collection of random assortment of, of 13 bangers for your ears. You know what I'm saying? As I'm actually working on my next album you know what cool. i mean and and then uh so there's gonna be some singles that drop me and asaka the renegade that's gonna be called let it bang uh this friday january 5th is uh prayer f- prayer for the players fat ray big herc and myself produced by my homie simple cuts uh what other singles i got it, it, 
we filmed a bunch of videos, dog. Shout out to the homie Mino. And the Bronco tape is going to drop. And then Saturday, February 10th is Valentine's Day 7 at Old Miami. So every year before Valentine's, I always throw a super dope hip-hop show. Uh, not just hip-hop, any genre. A dope-ass music showcase at Old Miami. And we're on number 7 this year. I can't believe it. And it's always called Valentine's Day the weekend before Valentine's. And this year is going to be dope. I haven't announced the lineup yet. Um, but Saturday, February 10th, O Miami, sure. come through. Probably have you back on before then just uh, to get the, the word Anytime out. Anytime you man. want, man. Anytime yeah. you these, want, bro. These conversations, listen, man, I'm a, I was once a student of hip-hop, and then <laughs> I fell off of it because of getting involved in it. Like I said, blew a lot of the mystery for me and it made it less interesting. But hearing you talk finding, about it. Finding out there's no Santa Claus. Yeah, type shit. So now hearing you talk about it reignites it. It's like, man, you know what? There is, It's still here. You just got to find it, right? Here's what it is, brother. I say it like this. Just be here for the culture. Right, exactly. Be here for the quality music, not just the trend. Be here for the culture. Culture and, and art is greater than trends. So the fashion, the hip-hop dance, the, 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 the quality music, and just understand and respect where it comes mm. from. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and add to it. Exactly. And just add to it. Don't You know, when you come in here just trying to, you know, Use it for your own benefit, then you're just treating it like a, you know what I'm saying, a no, dirty no. rag or some shit like that. Well, instead what, of respecting it, and 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 that's what that's exactly what it is. And so when you get involved in it, you, you see look, everybody treats it like a dirty yeah, rag. Yeah, it's like it's like it's, it's just a cash grab, and it's like oh fuck, that's like exa- the opposite of what the fuck. What, you what be you're in. talking about, bro, is one of the greatest concept records ever by the homie Common. Man, he had a song I used to love her. It's one of the greatest hip hop songs. One of the people always say it's one of the top ten like concept records ever. Where on your first listen, you think he he's talking about a girl. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I met this girl when I was ten years old. And what I love most, she has so much soul. And he's talking about how this girl then they got older and she goes to college and now she's all about just getting money and it's not as pure as she was when she was younger. And the whole time you think about you know you think that he's talking about a girl that he used to love, but. It changed, but at the end, he goes, who I'm talking about, y'all, is hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? So that was his experience. Yeah, man. It's cool to hear them implement shit in a way where it's like you think you're listening to something that you can bob your head to, but if you're actually breaking down what the fuck they're saying, it's like a whole different concept. I think that's the coolest form of hip-hop that there could ever possibly be is when you you can apply that. Yeah. Um, What was it? it? Man, you said something that made me fucking want to ask you one last question. What the You just said something fucking super interesting. Valentine's Day. um, No, no. You just said it right now. Fuck. Uh, I guess Outcast, I- Common, I used to love her. Uh, I met this girl when I was 10 years old, and then you started bringing out the big boy Outcast shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I brought out the Andre from Rosa Parks, super dope song. Man. Uh, well, you know, well, I, forgot, I, for, I forgot what the fuck I was going to bring, but you were in Shade 45 too, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been on there twice. One was solo in 2019, and, uh, and then recently, this past April, when me and Stretch were promoting the Bill and Isaiah album, mm. uh, we were out there. And shout out to the homie DJ Eclipse. Uh, and the shit and DJ Riz and the whole rap is out of control family and the whole shade four five family. Uh, DJ Premier, um, shout out to him. He's played quite a few of my records on shade four five. Shout out to Static Selector. Uh, he's played uh, a few of my records on shade four five, and that was uh, that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, man. And, and, and DJ Tony Touch, the legend, baby. Toka Tuesdays. He played me and Stretch's shit. So shout out. Um, to Shay Four Five Sirius XM. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that on your show. What? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> uh, man, I, like that, those cats, man. Shit, I, like you, like man, that shit's crazy. Like I didn't even know Eminem had his own radio stations like five years ago. Like, yeah, Sirius XM. Maybe what you, I did say something earlier. Whereas if you're gonna come into here, just add to the culture. Don't yeah. treat it like a dirty rag. Yeah. You know, and just try to get rich off it. Right. This is a culture. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and, and I think... Um, well, you got to look at it like this, right? Because a lot of people, and I get what you're saying. I know you're not directly saying that towards me, but I know you're saying, like, when the people come into the game, they treat it with respect and everything like that. Mm-hmm. One thing is, though, that one day, I mean, you know, I'm going to make it more publicly known. This was never really supposed to be a hip-hop podcast. And I never really considered myself a hip hop connoisseur. There was never a time where I said I am a hip hop connoisseur, I'm a rap sure. connoisseur, or I'm a part of. More so, it was because of how I was applying myself that people were like, "No, you are a part of the culture." Because one time I was talking to 
uh, Kiefer, which is he, he filmed T Grizzly's first day out and a lot of T Grizzly's music videos. He's done so much work in the hip hop scene. And he asked me, he's like, do you feel like you're a part of the culture? And I was like, you know what, man, that's up to the culture to decide if I'm a part of the culture. I was like, I'm an entertainer and I love being in entertainment. And if that's where I'm at, that's where I'm at. I, I'm not going to try to force my way into something or say that I am part of something. So for me, I'm an entertainer and the people that gravitate towards me and who I gravitate towards to happen to be hip hop artists. Sure. And you know, that's, that's the way it goes. So that's what it of, is, man. A lot of people, you know, I was just on Ice War Vessels. He has a podcast. I was just on his vod- podcast, and they said the same exact thing to me, kind of like, you know, you're a hip-hop guy, and you have you have a majority of, uh, all, he's like, they basically were just questioning me about a lot of stuff about what I'm doing in the hip-hop game, and I, and I pretty much broke it down. I was like, bro, I never walked into the hip-hop game. The hip-hop game literally came to me straight up. I never called a rapper, or I never called somebody. I'm like, yo, let's do this and let's do that. They called me. They walked to me. And we became friends, and we built relationships with each other. And so now everybody who comes on my podcast is just people that I built relationships throughout time. And they happen to be fucking hip-hop and rap artists. You know? For the most part, because you've had other people. Yeah, uh, I've had other people, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, like one day I'm really going to break it out and let people know, like, no, I, you know, hip hop is something that I'm always gonna pay attention to and focus on to make sure that I'm doing the right thing for it while I'm here. But that's not really what the fuck I ever walked into it for. Right, right, saying? right, right, right. So that's just uh, I, I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I respect mm, that, yeah, and yeah. I didn't mean it towards you when I said. Well, I was just saying in general, if you're gonna you, right, you know, right, anybody, anybody watching this, me, him, whatever, anybody, yeah, treat this as a culture, right, and respect this culture. You know, and by culture, I don't. You know, there's many cultures on planet Earth. Some are based on ethnic cultures. Some cultures are not based on ethnicity. There's uh, a skateboard culture. There's a fucking marijuana culture. There's a pro wrestling culture. And all I'm saying is have respect for for hip hop and rap and understand that there's people who made hit records that changed the world that give you the opportunity to make a living or make some, uh, even if you treat it as a side hustle, that's okay. Or even if it's just a way to express yourself, that's okay. But just respect the people that came here before you and respect the people that are going to come here after you. So, Just like you would have respect for your own ethnic culture. You know what I'm saying? If you're Italian, Italian people protect their culture. You see what I'm saying? Mexican people protect their culture. Um, it don't have to be a, a nationality, ethnic thing. If you are a hip-hop artist, a hip-hop producer, or you just are a fan of hip-hop music and you break dance or you do graffiti, have respect for your own culture right. is what I'm saying. Facts. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's what it is. And understand, I will say this too, understand who this came from. You know what I'm saying? This came from from from. This is a an extension of the African American culture. So if you're not black, have respect and understand that this is a culture that did come from an ethnic culture, and have respect for that shit. Yeah, for you get sure. what I'm saying? If you rap, if you DJ, if you produce, you know, understand that, and just just it's just be respectful. Right. It's very simple. You don't have to kiss no one's ass. You don't have to do nothing. Nothing. It just just. Be respectful and watch how you speak about people and watch how you, you know what I'm saying? Just like anything else, like if you were to go into somebody's house, you know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're going to go into uh, 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 somebody's house who's a different religion than you, so obviously they have a different culture in that household, respect it. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, just, and we, just be mindful of how you move and what, what, what you say. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. People are loose-lipped, for sure. They say a lot of things without thinking the consequences, or they'll speak information they're not supposed to speak. They do a lot of things that just get them a lot of clout. But again, it's not really showing respect to what it is. And the reason people do that at the end of the day is simply because they don't want to work on their craft. They would rather do the gimmicky stuff to boost their careers versus actually just sitting down in the studio and recording and writing. And so... Uh, so, and some people are just kind of nuts too though some people are just like fuck it, i don't give a fuck i'm gonna right. say whatever the fuck's in my mind but i do like that approach fucking be mindful be respectful and just um you know treat everybody uh with treat everybody with the integrity from within you like you know what i'm saying if you have a certain way that you live your life and you want people to respect you and treat you the way you want to be treated then obviously just like they told us in school treat people the way you want to be treated but i will say one thing bro 
people I the people that are starving in the rap game, I always turn up I always turn my head because I always go like the people who are starving. I'm talking about the people the only fucking way out is rap. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do go like fuck it, I understand. Sometimes I do go like that. Sometimes I do go like this is your only fucking way out. Like for whatever reason you can't go to school, for whatever reason you can't get a job, for get whatever it. reason you can't and I'm like it. sometimes I'm like fuck man all right do what you got to do son but damn like good luck like I I understand it I get it it's not ideal brother yeah it's not an ideal situation and when yeah. you're when when one is put in um, fucked up circumstances to disadvantage mm. your options none of them are glorious so. Yeah, no, it is what it is. You got to come back before Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Pull up on us, man. Um, yeah, any day. You let me know. Uh, is there uh, is there any other future projects? Or is that we did a weird? No, we I, I'm definitely working on a on an album right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna put you too got much the name detail. Of the album? Not gonna even not, throw that no, out there. No names. No nah, nothing. brother. Not not till I'm yeah. I'm I'm deeper in the process. Oh, but see, it's uh, good you waited on the. The Bronco name is a good name. And the Bronco you wait, tape it's coming a, it's out. A, you waited enough time where people won't associate it with OJ Simpson, man. Is that <laughs> I actually kind of I, I like that. Maybe if I do the Bronco tape too, like like it might be a picture of the, of the white Bronco. On you the think cover. that'd be hard? Don't steal my fucking idea. <laughs> sure. And maybe it's already been done. Who knows? <laughs> but um, uh. Yeah, I, but I will say, and again, I'm not gonna say the name of the movie or not. I'm not allowed to or whatever. But I did get a placement of a fucking movie that's dropping this year, featuring some, 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 some. Uh, um, is it a Toby movie or is it like a real nah, movie? Nah, brother. <laughs> nah, brother. This it's a is a real movie. It's a real movie, okay. and uh, I'll tell you about it when we get off the camera. Perfect. But uh, it's it's some prominent people in it, shit. So that's that's a good look, and. Uh, Hey, you know, 2024, we're on day one. We got 365 days in front of us. Whew. I'm trying to hit up more cities, uh, more countries, rap on more stages. Um, and, and and shout out to everybody who fucked with the single fever. I didn't expect that to really, you know, that was just something cool that the label in Serbia put out. And all of a sudden it was just like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Cass was really, really feeling it. And um, there you go. That's the reward. Like sure. we keep saying, you know, I I made I made somebody's uh, uh, eardrum feel good that day. So if I can bring you some some soothing sounds to your eardrum, that's what we're here for, baby. For sure, Val. It's always a pleasure having you on, man. Look forward to seeing you next month. Appreciate Parallel you. Sound Studio, Highlight Visual Shootings Productions. We're out. Peace. Gia. Fire, man.